Hello everybody, welcome back to the Farming Simulator 25 Tips and Tricks video. Today we're going to talk about all things rice, both standard rice and long grain rice. Now before we dive into the types of machinery you're going to need for either type of rice, I do want to say that since this video is going to be covering both types of rice, I will be putting timestamps in the description with respect to when we're talking about standard rice and when we're talking about long grain rice. So if you're here for just one or the other type, then you can quickly jump to the appropriate area. If you're here just to learn about rice in general, then by all means watch the entire video. If we take a look here at the infographic that Giants provided pre-release of Farming Simulator 25, you can see that standard rice is going to have an average yield of 13,200 liters, an average selling price on ED of on easy of $3,300, an average seeds per hectare of 156 liters four months to grow from april to may is when you're going to want to put rice in the ground and you're going to be able to harvest sometime august to september now with respect to long grain rice well we have an average yield per hectare of 18,000. an average selling price is down a bit for 1589 dollars on easy we're going to need more seed per hectare with 500 liters of seed per hectare listed, five growing months. We can plant it in April, and apparently April alone, and we're gonna be able to harvest it in September and September alone. Now, the only real similarity between rice and long grain rice is rice in their name and the fact that you have to specially prepare the field. A lot of the similarities go by the wayside after that. With respect to standard rice, well, you've got some specialty machinery. One, we're gonna be able to plant rice saplings, and we can buy those in pallet format in a shop. And to do that, we're gonna come here to our vehicles. We're gonna scroll down here to our objects, and we're gonna find we have pallets, and we have, then we have rice sapling pallets, $450 for 24 pieces. Now, I would venture a guess that 24 pieces may equate out to 24 liters, but that will have to be figured out once we start our planting process. But that's not the only way we can get rice saplings because we could also put down a rice sapling greenhouse and we could produce our own rice saplings by simply providing water. So let's go ahead and check out the recipe for this. You see here, we're gonna be able to get basically for three units of water, one rice sapling, 48 cycles per month. And that's how we can grow our own rice saplings, should we wish to do so. So we can come here into build mode. We're gonna to go to our factories tab, click over two times to greenhouses. And our first greenhouse is gonna be that rice sapling greenhouse. $3,000, we can rotate that 360 degrees on center. And of course, we can sell rice saplings if we wish and if we have excess. So let's go ahead and take a look and see how we can sell those and what type of money we're gonna get for rice saplings. So they're gonna have an average selling price, well, somewhere between $10,140 and $9,889. I will admit I haven't run that calculation already. But overall, we're looking at somewhere between $10,000 average selling price on easy economy throughout the year. With respect to long grain rice, well, we're going to plant long grain rice with just a traditional cedar. And for this video, we're going to be using the Lemkin Soltar 12. And we're going to be using traditional seed to put in our cedar, which we're going to then toggle over to be long grain rice and you can pick up your seed by once again going to objects we have a big bag of seed $1,260 per thousand liters we can get a big bag pallet of seed $1,260 for a thousand liters or we can get a pallet of seed bags 1,050 liters for again $1,260 now we can also find that also cross-referenced up here in our seeding category under seeds under the subcategory of seeding. And again, any of the seeders are gonna be able to put long grain rice into the ground. 
you will not be able to put standard rice in the ground with a traditional seeder. Again, you're going to have to make use of a custom rice planter for that. And here is the traditional seed indicator for that. As far as harvesting long grain rice, well, you're in luck that basically any traditional grain harvester and grain harvesting header is going to be able to harvest your long grain rice. Now, once the rice is harvested, what can you do with it? Well, you can actually do quite a lot with rice. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rice production infographic. So we're going to find rice and long grain rice located right here. And long grain rice and standard rice are inputs for the cereal factory. Direct inputs to the grain mill, direct inputs to the oil mill, and direct inputs into the preserved food factory. The grain mill, which is going to be able to produce rice flour, then also is a direct input to the bakery. So in essence, rice. You can use it to manufacture cereal. You can use it to manufacture rice flour, which can then be used to manufacture bread or cakes. You can use it to manufacture rice oil. And you can use it to manufacture rice cakes, bagged rice, and boxed rice over at the Preserved Food Factory. Or, of course, you could sell rice directly as a grain. On Riverbend Springs, which is where we are recording this video, you can sell your rice directly to the canning factory if you do not own it for your preserved food production. You can sell it at the farmer's market that is pre-existing on the map. You can sell it at the train sell point, grain barge terminal one and two, as well as then grain river silo. We also have a grain mill on the map and an oil mill on the map that if you do not own, you can sell your product there. And of course, if you put down your productions, then you have your preserved food factory, your oil mill, your grain mill, and your cereal factory as well. With respect to long grain rice, well, the list is pretty much going to be the same. We have our canning factory if we do not own it. We have the farmer's market. We have the train sell point, grain barge one and two. We also have the grain river silo. And then if we own the production facilities, we can put it, sell it at the oil mill, the grain mill, and the cereal factory, as well as the canning factory, AKA the preserved food factory. Looking at all of the various rice outputs. Well, ultimately we have rice flour. And that is gonna be able to be sold at the bakery if we do not own it. We have then also the farmer's market, the train sell point, the restaurant, the small farmer's kiosk that is outside our starting farm. And of course we could always buy it, don't do it, from the warehouse. Now I have some other areas listed here because I put down a second farmer's market here in my demo area. I put down a big farmer's kiosk in my demo area. I've also pre-placed a bakery the uh, preserved food factory, and then also a couple of other items that we see doubled up here on my testing area. Rice boxes, again, are gonna be pr produced at the canning factory or preserved food factory. We can sell those at the farmer's market, Goldcrest Valley train sell point, the restaurant, the small farmer's kiosk that is outside our starting farm, and then rice bags. Well, we have, again, the farmer's market, train sell point, the restaurant, and the small farmer's kiosk for that as well. Rice rolls or rice cakes, you're gonna be able to sell, well, at the farmer's market, train sell point, and the small farmer's kiosk, as well as the restaurant. Then we have rice oil, more of the same. Farmer's market, train sell point, restaurant, and the small farmer's kiosk. So rice is quite the versatile crop. Not only can we sell it, well, it is pretty extensively used in, again, our preserved food factory, our cereal factory, our grain mill, our oil factory, our oil mill, if you will, and then kind of as a secondary production from the grain mill, we have rice flour, 
that's going to be able to be used over here at the bakery. Now, with respect to field preparations, there really isn't anything you're going to do with respect to field preparations other than convert the field into a rice field. So, for example, here we are on our demo field 41. It needs lime, it needs plowing, it's got weeds, it's it's not been done anything with since we harvested last year. So pretty much this is a completely untouched field. And we don't need to do anything with it. We don't need to prep it in any way. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here into build mode and we're going to convert this into a rice field. So in build mode, shift P on PC, factories, a toggle over to cultivation and run a select rice field. And from here, we are going to basically outline the field. But the first thing you want to do is you want to decide where do I want the water pump? And I've decided I want the water pump on this part of the field because if it's on this part of the field, I think it's going to be getting in the way. Over here, there's a fence. I think it's going to be getting in the way. So again, I want it over here on this part of the field. So what we're going to do is we're going to come here to a corner. And I'm just using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. I'm going to click on the corner. And now we are going to come over here to the other corner. And I'm going to click. And then we're going to come over here to the other corner. And we're going to click. And now we have this kind of triangle shape, but we're not done. I want to close out the box by clicking here. And now we have made our box. And assuming that we are satisfied with that box, well, we can right click to close it out. If we're not satisfied with that box, we're going to hit B and that's going to remove the last corner that we put in. B again, right? So we can go back and see like, oh no, not quite. I messed up. So let's go ahead and make this box again. Just like that. And to close it out, we're gonna right click. And instantly the field is now converted into a rice field. And part of that conversion is that a water pump has been added. Now, if we walk over here into our field, one, we now have a cultivated texture. Two, it no longer needs lime. It no longer has weeds. It's been fully prepared. So the act of creating the rice field initially fully prepares the rice field for seeding. And depending on what we're gonna put in first, if we're gonna do regular rice, then we're gonna to want to flood the field first if we're going to plant long grain rice, then we're just going to go ahead and put rice in the ground as it is right now. Now for this video, I'm going to start with standard rice. And as such, I need to flood our field. So we're going to hit R here at our pump. We're going to hit flood. And well, that's going to start the whole process. Now, flooding of your field can be accelerated. And I have that in air quotes. We can accelerate flooding our field by speeding up game time. And we can see now that our field is flooding super, super quick. And our flood field is now flooded. And it is now 1253. So I think it took about 50 minutes of game time in order to flood the field. It only took just a few seconds of real time because we did speed the process up. We're at a water level of 65%. And we can't pick flood but we can pick empty but we don't want to do that at this juncture now we're ready to start putting our rice saplings in the field so I've already loaded this planter up with one pallet of rice saplings you see that pallet of rice saplings now has equated to 24 liters worth of rice this planter also has the ability to put fertilizer in the ground so we're going to go ahead and use a big bag of fertilizer. We're going to hit R. 
see that that is going to hold 250 liters of fertilizer. If you don't know where you can pick up your fertilizer, well, you're going to be able to buy it here in the shop. We have it under yield improvement. We can buy a big bag of solid fertilizer, $1,920, 4,000 liters. We can buy another big bag here of solid fertilizer, again, $1,900 for 1,000 liters. Or if we come and scroll down here to our objects category, again, under big bags, we have our solid fertilizer and our big bag pallets. They were solid fertilizer there. Now the way this is gonna work is we're going to come up here to our field. We're going to drive down in it. Really love the details with the wake, the water reacting to us being in the field for the sake of being able to drive in a straight line. I'm gonna go ahead and set this thing up to do steering assist. Unfold it, drop it down, turn it on, and off we go. Now, what I really think is cool about this is the way this thing works. Right? These little fingers, they grab the sapling, and then the trays basically work kind of like a... I liken it to the old days of a typewriter with the typewriter cassette going across. Ding! Right? And you slap it back. And it rolls up a line, you type da -da 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 -da, ding, slap it, right? So it's kind of just fun to watch. And as this empties its first cassette, then we'll see the front trays teleported here to the back to load this thing up so we can continue our process. And according to the infographic, we should go through about five pallets of saplings for this field. I'm just going to go ahead and continue this process offline and I'll report back once we are done as to how many pallets I ended up using. So in the end, I needed seven pallets of rice saplings for this. I did the math and that is right about right with respect to the fact that one hectare should be 156 or so liters of rice saplings and each pallet is going to be 24 liters of rice saplings. So we are now good to go. We have a field that is fertilized and planted in rice. Right now it's a 65% yield bonus plus 50% on our fertilization. And uh, let's go ahead and make our way into the next month. So you can see we have now moved into May. Our rice has gone through a growth state and our rice field is technically no longer flooded. So all the water that was there when we planted last month has been absorbed. So I'm gonna take this opportunity to go ahead and fertilize this field and get it to 100%. Now I've switched tractors to one with narrow tires because I did do a little bit of a test and I did find that I was doing crop damage at this row state with tires other than narrows. So that's just something to be aware of as you are maybe preparing and doing your own field work on your rice fields so this won't take too terrible long and what we then need to do we need to go over to our pump and flood this field again because if we don't maintain the proper levels of moisture and flooding on our rice fields then we will see crop damage or yield loss as a result so we now see plus 100 percent Fertilization plus 87% on our yield bonus. We're going to flood the field. You see water level too low. Flood the field to avoid damage. Flood, and there we go. And once again, we speed up game time. 
then the flooding of the field will also be accelerated. And the pump will auto cut off once the field is at its proper point. 66% rice level. We're no longer warned that we are going to have crop damage if we don't flood it. So now we just move on until June and uh, check things out at that point. So come June, rice has once again grown some more. And once again, if we check our pump, we're going to find that we need to reflood the field. Let's go ahead and do that. And well, now we just come back in August. Well, I guess I need to go back to school because obviously July comes after June. At any rate, here we are in July. We've had another growth state. The rice is actually quite tall at this point compared to where it was just a month ago. And if we look closely, we can see kind of the introduction of some rice grains in the field here. If we check our pump in July, there's no, there's no flood, there's no empty, there's no warning that we are going to lose crop if we don't flood our field. So we're good. We don't need to do anything in July. And that should be setting our stage for August's harvest. August has come and it is indeed time to harvest our rice. See the rice is starting to dry. The plant though is still fairly green. It says ready to harvest down in the info box. And that is where we are now going to bring out our Izeki harvester. Right, we already talked about this a little bit, but if we come down here to our specialty crops, we have rice harvesters, the Izeki HJ6130, $95,000. And it is gonna be the harvester of choice for standard rice. Now there may be modded harvesters that will work with standard rice at this point by the time you are watching this video. But as of now, and basically for our tips and tricks videos in general, we're gonna be focusing exclusively on base game machinery. Now it does look like we have had a little bit of damage, possibly as a result of a hailstorm or some other damage. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come up here to our rice field. We're going to resume our harvester, turn everything on. Just for fun, I'm gonna go ahead and enable guided steering. And off we go. And we got some really cool animations as we bring our rice into the harvester cut and coming around the side and then the grain is being extracted from the plant and the plant matter is being deposited into the back of the harvester. See what it looks like from the inside here. That's a good view. And this particular harvester is going to hold 2,000 liters worth of rice before it needs to offload. And when we get to the edge of the field here, I just want to see what type of manipulation we have on our pipe, on our output pipe. Turn this off. Let's hit pipe out. So it's going to rotate to our right. Left click. And we go up and down with our pipe. So we can really raise it up. Right click. Left and right. And I rotate our pipe. How far can I rotate this? So it does not have the ability to rotate to the left. So in order to be pipe out, we want to make sure that we have our right side of the harvester on the outside of the field. So let's hit O to pipe back in. 
and I will continue the harvesting process and I'll bring it back here in a little bit once we get to a point where we are uh, ready to offload our first load of standard rice. So I kind of wanted to see if this harvester pipe would be able to go up and around this trailer, which is a fairly tall trailer and it can indeed. So that is good to see. And there we go, we got a rice filling into our trailer. So now it's just a, you know, a process of, of doing a thing, right? Swing around, start back up, lock her down, off we go. See you all in a bit. So I wanted to point something out because I ran into this after I unloaded the first load and experienced this after I unloaded the second load, but I caught it super fast and that is when you when this thing turns off when it gets a full load it raises the head and make sure you lower the head after you turn this thing back on because once it's empty you turn it on it doesn't lower the head so unless you lower the head when you drive forward you're going to basically destroy crop and you're not going to get any yield um, from that destroyed crop. So I did it here. And the first time I did it, I did it here. And it took me a little bit longer, you can see, before I figured out what the heck is going on. So be sure to lower the, the pickup head before you drive off after you've unloaded it. And the other thing that I wanted to point out was that uh, just like some other crops that we have seen, so far is that we get a mulch state with our harvest so we don't need to mulch after we harvest standard rice because we are dumping all the plant matter onto the ground after our harvest and that is in essence the same thing as what we would have done if we were being if we were to be mulching. Uh, I thought I had locked that in, okay. So, I just wanted to also let you know that. So, if you are someone that typically would mulch, you don't have to with respect to rice harvest, standard rice harvest, because we are dropping plant material on the ground, and that is then, as a result, giving us this mulched state. Okay, folks, so we are done harvesting our rice. And I have to say, a little disappointed on the yield. We have 11,164 liters. Now, remember the infographic, well, it said that we were gonna have a max yield of 13,000 200 liters per hectare. When we have seen the spinach video and our peas video, that max yield seemed to represent a standard yield percentage of 100 and didn't factor in the yield bonuses. But if you have seen the green beans video, you'll know that that didn't seem to be the case for green beans. It seemed to be that green beans, the max yield on the infographic was literally assuming you had a 100% yield bonus on your field. And I have to say, mathematically, that seems to be how it has worked out here with standard rice. Max yield on the infographic, 13,200. Our yield here, 11,164. If you recall, when we were working with our field over there, we had 85% yield bonus. Well, I've done the math and I've calculated this out and basically I have obtained 84.5% of the max yield as it is represented in the infographic. That is pretty interesting that it lines up pretty darn good with respect to 
the plus bonus that we had on our field here. So inconsistency maybe with Giants infographics. And I'm not a fan of that. I'm not a fan at all. Do something one way and not change it up. That's all I can say about that. Now with our rice, of course we could sell it here at our farmer's market. We've talked about the various areas that we can sell it at. We've talked about the various areas where we can produce things with our rice. And I'm going to produce a little bit of rice oil with our rice here. And I'm going to produce a little bit of rice flour with our rice because I want to make some rice bread, I guess. And then we're going to dump the rest of this over here in our cereal factory. Although we don't have the other inputs for the cereal factory. I still just I'm going to dump that in there and I'll probably just add the inputs I need in order to make some basic rice cereal with this. And there we go. Now, what do we do with this field now that we have completed our harvest? Well, unlike when we created the rice field and the act of creating the rice field basically prepared the rice field for us with respect to plowing, liming, and all of that. That's not the case here. Now we need to come through here and we can cultivate this field. We can add lime to it if it needs lime. We already have 50% fertilization. So our our plant material, the act of harvesting this, just like grass, has given us half of our fertilization already. So we only need to put one more spread of fertilization on here and we're good to go. So if we wanted to plant rice in this again, we would fertilize the field, we would cultivate the field, and we'd be ready now, once it came time to plant rice, to put rice back in here. We can actually put whatever crop we want into this field. We are not limited to only putting rice in this field at this point. So we did a test in a live stream and I put canola in a rice field. It was just fine and dandy. So you can prepare this and put literally anything you want in this field going forward. Of course, you wouldn't flood the field or anything like that if you didn't have rice in it. But if you wanted to delete the rice field, you could. But I want to caution you not to do that because if you delete this rice field, okay, it is basically going to remove all aspects of this being a field. And if you want to make use of this in a field in any other way, you're going to have to plow it back up. So there, this is no longer a field. This is just dirt. We still have our ground deformation, which is neat, but this is just dirt. We're not going to be able to do anything. You see, there's no state. There's nothing. This is now stateless dirt. So once you make something a rice field, I wouldn't suggest making it not a rice field by deleting the pump. Unless you're prepared to plow this up and make it back into a field again using the create field function. Or you're going to go back in here and, well, quite honestly, make it a rice field again by going through this whole process once again. But if you're going to do that, then you probably wouldn't have gone and deleted the pump to begin with, unless you were really just looking to
overlaps another object. Maybe because I'm standing in here. I mean, basically, if you're gonna, right, if you're gonna remove the pump just to make another rice field, maybe you're doing it to avoid having to go through all the field work. But it just does seem to be a little bit odd that you would go and do that, right? So in general, I wouldn't suggest deleting the pump once you put it in, because you can put literally any crop you want to in here at that point. And then you don't have to worry about it. Uh, we want to move the last corner and right click. There we go. We have our field back. We have our pump back. And it's just a little bit smaller than it was before. Right? So there you go. Now I'm going to completely reset everything and get ready to roll to demonstrate long rice. Now for part two, we're now going to be covering long grain rice. And for full disclosure, I wanted to let you know that I completely reset this save game back to the point where we were before we even started to plant our normal rice. In fact, we have defined the rice field. And at this point, we would have flooded the rice field previously in the video in order to start planting our regular rice. But instead, we have rolled back to this point for our long grain rice discussion. A few other things that I have done is I've gone into our production. And in the first video, we added some rice to the cereal factory, the grain mill, and the oil mill. I have, in this rolled back save game, attempted to calculate how much rice I needed to add to each of these productions in order to produce 3,000 liters or what hopefully is going to be three pallets of rice oil for our oil factory based on some calculations I tried to run. I basically took 3,000 liters, divided it by 10 in order to get 300 cycles, and then I multiplied that by 12 in order to get the rice amount that I needed for hopefully 3,000 liters worth of rice oil. I did the same thing with respect to our rice flour to get 3,000 liters worth of rice flour. And for cereal, well, I did the math for rice. I also did the math for honey because honey is required to get rice cereal. So I've done that. And I've gone ahead and added what should be, and I hedged my bets a little bit on this because it wasn't a whole number, I hedged my bets a little bit on adding rice flour to again get 3,000 pallets or 3,000 units of bread, which will hopefully be three pallets. And the reason I did that is I wanted to sell one pallet of each to both the small farmer's kiosk, the large farmer's kiosk, and our placeable farmer's market, just to get a little sense of the profitability of these end products with respect to our rice. Now, I don't live by, I don't play by the idea of what's the most profitable way, what's the cheapest way, what's the easiest way. I just play the game. And if I wanna make rice flour, I'll make it. If I wanna make rice bread, I'll make it, right? It doesn't really matter to me about profitability. It seems to matter to a whole lot of players about profitability, but you know what? That's not what this channel is about, but I'll, I'll play along a little bit and I'll at least see of these productions, which maybe is going to ultimately end up being apparently the most profitable or the least profitable. As we have found in another video, it seems like green beans are completely not worth the effort uh, for the amount of revenue you get from green bean production. Definitely compared to spinach bag production, that was through the roof. Green bean production for jar green beans, eh, it was just meh. Right, it was like, why, why even bother? So, back on track. For long grain rice, we don't have to flood the field first. We seed the field first after we have defined the rice field. And we're gonna use normal seed in order to do that. So we're gonna find that here under shop. We can go to seeding. We can find a category of seeds. We have our big bag of seeds. We have our big bag pallet. 
big bag and our pallet of seeds. $1,260 each. We do get 50 liters more for our money with a pallet of big bags. And we're going to use a traditional seeder in order to put our long grain rice in the ground. For this video, we're using the Lemkin Soltar 12. Why? Because I feel the value for the money, it's a pretty darn good seeder. 12 meter working with, it does not fertilize, so you will have to come through and do fertilization after the fact versus some of these other seeders that do fertilize. But the power requirement, 180 horsepower, 12 meter working with, I think it's a pretty darn good deal at its price compared to some of these other ones. Well, six meters, four meters, right? And the power requirements for those are pretty steep. So that's why we're using that particular seeder. So let's go ahead and get on with that process. I will fill this up with seed. We're gonna have 3,050 liters worth of seed when we are done, far more seed than we will need. Uh, but what we will do is we will basically then compare how much seed did we use versus how much seed does the infographic say we should have used for this particular size field. Something else to be sure you do is to change the seed type in the lower right corner by hitting Y until we see long grain rice. And now we're going to be able to magically, with the use of the game, put long grain rice in as opposed to any other type of seed. As we would with any other crop, we're going to come up here. We're going to address the field with our seeder. Get lined up. Lower the seeder down, turn it on and off to the races we go. Now you saw that pop up, complain about long grain rice gonna be planted in rice fields. That was because we, we technically started the planting process outside the field. So we are all good to go. We'll go ahead and check our PDA here. We should see that we are indeed putting long grain rice into the ground. Something else I want to point out is that we are not starting with a mulched state. And also we are not starting with any sort of fertilization. So we will need to come through here and fertilize our field. So with the seeding done, looking at our infographic, it says we should have used 500 liters worth of seed for our one hectare field. Now we know that our field is slightly under one hectare. According to the pump, it says it's 0.96. And we managed to use 470 liters worth of seed. So yeah, that's pretty pretty spot on, pretty close. We now have 2,580 liter, liters of seed and we started with 3,050. So yeah, it seems like we're good to go there. This field also lists that it is not fertilized. So I'm going to go ahead and take this time before I flood the field to put its first fertilization state down. Now that we have fertilized this to 50%, I probably could have come in here and rolled the field and done other prep work to get that up a little bit higher as far as our yield bonus goes. But we're not going to mess with it too terrible much because I do want to have this about as comparative as I can for our regular rice. Now, unlike our regular rice, we don't flood the field now, okay? We have to go and let's advance into May, and then we'll see if our field needs flooded at that point. We've moved forward a month. We do have a little bit of growth on our rice, which is good to see. And if we come over here to our pump, well, now we do have the ability to flood our field, but I don't want to flood it quite yet. Let's go ahead and put our second fertilization down for this. That way we'll get it to 100%. And at that point, then we will flood the field. So we now are at 100% fertilization. After that second pass, we're going to come to our pump and we're going to hit flood. And just like with our standard rice, flooding the field is going to be game time dependent. 
So if we speed up the game clock, we will see our field flood much faster. And when the pump cuts off, we know that the field is flooded. If you come back here, we can see water level 53%. But according to our pump, that is basically what it wants. So now it's uh, moving forward until June. See what things look like at that point. We have made it into June and our rice fields, well, it needs flooding again. So let's come back over here to our pump. And yes, let's add water back to it again. And again, just like earlier, we'll speed time up and that will speed up the flooding of the field. Once the pump cuts off, things are good to go. 66% flooded this time around. See you guys in July this time. I'm not gonna forget the months. Here we are in July. We've got a little bit of growth on our rice. We flood it again. And, uh, well, see y'all back in August. Unlike standard rice, we'd be ready to harvest at this point because it is August. But we are with our long grain rice. No longer need to flood our field. We have one more growth state in order to get to our harvest ready for a long grain rice so see you back here in september and september is when we're going to fire up our harvester and unlike standard rice where we had to use the specialty harvester regular rice we're going to be able to use just a regular grain harvester and a regular grain header september is here we have our long grain rice it is ready to harvest you can see all those dark rice grains on the plant. The plant itself is still fairly green. But we have the ever important ready to harvest state. So let's go ahead and jump into our cloths. We're using the new Evian. Now I think long grain rice really does feel more at home with respect to farm sim and maybe American farming or just larger scale farming in general. Uh, you know, with standard rice, you've got the little planter, you got the little harvester, um, you got the little saplings and all of that. But with long grain rice, being able to put it in the ground with a traditional seeder, being able to harvest it with a traditional harvester, uh, really just does make it feel like it is a bit more contemporary. School bus, dude, you are not allowed to pass. I don't know where you get your driver's license from to operate a school bus, but buses, oh my god, you would not be doing that. I need to talk to the school district because that is just about ridiculous. Now, rice is not a crop that we can put straw down for, so we are going to be scattering our chaff out the back pretty neat animation on that and as a result of scattering that chaff out the back let's go ahead and take a look here at our mulch state we are putting mulch down on the ground so unlike what we showed earlier in the video where we had no mulch state. We do have a mulch state for our long grain rice after it's been harvested because we are scattering all that chaff, all that plant material back behind the harvester. So I'm just gonna continue to harvest this. Now, according to the infographic, we should have around 18,000 liters of long grain rice when we are done with this approximate one hectare field. We do have a greater yield also with long grain rice, supposedly compared to regular rice. So we will compare that and verify that information as well. Like I said, I feel like long grain rice will probably be the preferred rice for many players simply because it has a lower barrier to entry. 
you don't have to buy specialty equipment and well it's a lot faster to harvest a lot faster to put in the ground as well the only trade-off is it takes a month longer to grow so i've managed to make uh just under two headland passes around this field and we're already nearly full with our harvester so i thought i'd go ahead and unload with a traditional grain harvester, unloading is pretty straightforward. You just pipe out with an O, put the pipe under a trailer, and there you go. So I think we are on track to get about that 18,000 liters per hectare, according to the infographic, which is a little frustrating. And why I say this is a little frustrating, because we have seen now in three instances where this infographic max yield per hectare has literally represented the absolute max yield you can get with a hundred percent bonus and then we've seen two instances where this infographic max yield per hectare did not all also factor in the yield bonus equations so we've seen two different crops where max yield was is if we had no bonus and then when we had our bonuses it was on top of this figure and then we've seen now three instances where this yield seems to hold to if you did indeed have a hundred percent bonus then that is when you would have seen the 18,000 liters per hectare so it's a little frustrating that we have some inconsistencies there with the infographics that seem to have been provided from Giants. So we'll have to see if that trend continues because with the crops that are carrying over from FS22, I'm gonna be going off of the information that is over on the Giants Academy for what we should expect to see per hectare as far as yield goes. And well, let's see what the trend continues to be. Is it showing us absolute max yield? Or is it showing us stator yield without any factoring in of the yield bonuses. With that, let me go ahead and finish harvesting this field and uh, we'll come back and we'll report in how much total rice, long grain rice, that we have seen. All right, so we have finished at this point our harvest. And let's go ahead and unload here. And we'll see what we get. Now, according to my calculations, 18,000 liters is what the infographic said. Our field stated that we had a 87% yield bonus. So, I took 87% of 18,000, and I got 15,660. We have 15,487. So, given the fact that we have just under one hectare field, according to the pump, 0.96. Well, if I took 15,660 times 0.96 is 15,033. So the fact that we have 15,487, I'm completely satisfied with. Assuming we once again use the infographic max 18,000 liters per hectare as literal 18,000 liters per hectare. If you have 100% yield bonus, then we are completely where we should be within our general range. With that said, let's go and look at a couple things. Let's look at our prices screen and let's go and compare our rice price versus our long grain rice price. So currently 
our rice price is well, it's at it's, it's at a pretty good high, three thousand four hundred sixty seven. Three thousand one hundred five is the low for our rice. For long grain rice, it's a lot lower. Sixteen seventy three versus fifteen hundred. So we didn't get half. We didn't get half the output of regular rice to long grain rice. We got more than that. So from face value, looks like we're going to make more money per hectare with rice than with long grain rice. As such, then likely all of our productions are also going to be this way. So let's see. Rice flour. It's going to be undifferent. Let's go to our green mill. Long grain rice to make rice flour. It's 15 units of long grain rice, 13 units of rice flour. Regular rice, 9 units of rice to 15 units of rice flour. So that is quite the difference. 15 units of rice to 9? Yeah. Uh, oil mill, long grain rice. For oil, 25 units of long grain rice, 12 units for standard rice, over double, right? And this is 9, 18. This is not quite double, but for oil, it's definitely over double because we're at 12 and, well, 25, right? So double that would be 24. Cereal factory, long grain rice cereal, 40 units of long grain rice. Versus 36 units of regular rice. So that's that's pretty close in line. I think if you were going to make cereal from long grain rice, it wouldn't be that big of a hit compared to regular rice. That would seem to be maybe a production worthwhile if you could keep honey into the production machine, right? Preserved Food Factory. Let's take a look at this. And this is what I want to dump my long grain rice into. To make rice cakes. That's what I'm calling these rice cakes. 60 units of rice, long grain rice, for 30 units, so half. So if I dump 2,000 liters of long grain rice, I'm going to get 1,000 liters of regular rice, or rice rolls. 56 to 50. That's very close to a one-to-one. -one. Rice bags, regular rice, 100 to 45. Long grain rice, 100 to 45. So, oh, that's a rice bag versus a rice box. Okay. So, rice boxes and rice bags are the same ratio. But we can't make long grain rice bags and we can't make regular grain rice boxes. So, let's see what the price looks like between these two. Prices, regular rice bags, 4467 to 4368. Rice boxes, a lot more, 8329, 8132. Rice boxes is where the money's at. Rice boxes is long grain rice. So let's go and put all of our long grain rice into our preserved food factory. Don't point these around back, silly. We know this. And we should get 45% of this yield. So 15. 1,400 times 45. So we should have almost, almost seven pallets. Just under seven pallets is what we're going to get here. So we will have six pallets of rice boxes once we process all of that rice. Not really sure how profitable rice is, really. Here we have our rice cereal. 
I don't know. I kind of thought maybe. Back up a little bit. I thought maybe a rice cereal would look different from regular rice boxes, but I guess not. And then we have our bread, right? Regular bread. Regular bread, rice bread. It looks all the same. A rice flour. And then our rice oil. Rice bran oil. So there we have that. So let's go ahead and fast forward one month. We'll get our rice boxes out. Um, I'll go ahead and transport and move all of these productions to the various sell points for quickly selling. And we'll just wrap it up and see which, which production seems to be kind of worthwhile from a money standpoint. But ultimately, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if rice is really worth doing. Honestly, I don't know. We now have our boxes of rice produced. So we have four different products that we have made with rice. Uh, we've made boxed rice here with our long grain rice. And then we made rice oil, rice flour, and rice cereal from our regular rice we could have made rice bags from our regular rice and we could have also made rice cakes from either rice i just chose to make rice boxes because honestly i felt that that was a bit more um, favorable with respect to our ratio with the long grain rice that we had because again remember it was it was pretty different the ratio of long grain rice to rice cakes versus regular rice to rice cakes. And then we also have a finished good of bread, which we made with our rice flour over at the bakery. Now, I'm not, like I said, that keen on, like, what's the most profit for what? My, it's just not how my head is working with respect to this game. The way I do this game is if I want to make rice cereal, sure, I'll do it. And if it loses me money, I don't really care because I wanted to make it. Same way with rice flour. I don't play the game with, I only do this because this is the best way of doing it according to some guy on the internet. Or I only do this because this is the most profitable according to my calculations. I, it, I mean, no, that's not how I do it. It's a game, it's here to enjoy yourself, it's to zone out and not really worry about profit loss. What's the best use of my money because it's not my money, it's just game money, right? And even if I'm playing a legit e economy series where I'm paying attention to all my money, I'm not cheating anything in, I'm still just playing it, really just to play it. So what we're gonna do here, just to see. And typically these two, the small one and the large kiosk, sell better than the farmer's market. I'm just gonna sell each of these. I've got super strength enabled, just to make it easier to sell all of these. So our cereal. $13,335 for one pallet of cereal. $13,083 for that same pallet of cereal. And then $11,140. So cereal was pretty good, right? Um, if we come back here and look at our recipe for cereal, we used regular rice. So we needed 36 units of rice to get 20 units of cereal, and we need 15 units of honey to go along with that. Our rice flour. 3759. 3602. And 29.61. So our rice flour is going to be here at our grain mill. Regular rice flour, 9 units of rice, 15 units of flour. Pretty good. We get more flour than rice that we put in. Long grain rice, 15 units of long grain rice to 13 units of rice flour. We get less flour for rice that we put in. Not, not a good deal here. Not a good deal. 
If you're gonna do rice flour, don't use long grain rice. Pretty bad deal. 49.27 for our rice oil. 49.96 for our rice oil. And 42.18 for our rice oil. So let's go and look at our rice oil. Regular rice oil, 12 units of rice, 10 units of oil. Long grain rice, 25 units of long grain rice, 10 units of oil. I mean, if you're going to make rice oil, you better make it with regular rice. Rice flour, 10,236. 9,930. 8,018. And our rice boxes, right? Remember that? 100 units of rice, 45 units of rice boxes. So 45% of what we put in is what we're going to get out. We put over 15,400 liters worth of long grain rice in. And we got seven pallets of long grain rice out. Our rice boxes out. So if we sold it for 10,000 liters a piece, or $10,000 a piece, that would have been $70,000 of profit for our one hectare field. Well, that, that seems pretty good. That's in line with some other crops that we have seen that have been added to Farm Sim 25. But some of the other ratios do not seem to be as favorable, right? So if we look down here at our rice box, again, 100 to 45. If we look at our rice bags, 56 to 50, 60 to 30. Double the rice goes in, half the rice comes out, right? Close to one to one ratio for regular rice. So the production really, really, really depends on some production is favorable for long grain rice, the rice boxes. Other production is very favorable for regular rice. So pay attention to maybe which type of rice you want to put into which type of production. And I'm sure you're going to find a sweet spot. This video is not going to an analyze what is the absolute best rice production for which type of rice. This video's sole intent has been to demonstrate how you prepare your field for rice, how you grow your rice, and how you harvest your rice depending on the two different types of rice. As I demonstrated earlier in the video, at this point, you can come in here and prepare this field however you want. You can fertilize it, you can lime it, you can cultivate it, you can prep it for the next year's harvest, you can put regular rice in here, you can put long grain rice in here, you could plant corn in here if you wanted to. Just because it's been set up with a pump doesn't exclude it from being able to be used for other crops. I would not come in here and delete this pump at this point because of the fact of, as we've already demonstrated, it completely deletes this as a field entirely and you would have to plow it using create fields to make use of it again as a field or put a pump down again in order to start the whole process over again, which seems to be a little bit um, counterproductive. So I hope you all have enjoyed this video on rice and long grain rice. Hope it's helped you figure out the process, what equipment you need to do in order to grow either type of rice and harvest either type of rice. And then maybe give you a little bit of an idea of what you can do with the rice when you're done. What you should so decide to do with that rice once you have harvested, that's really up to you in the end. But for me, it looks like rice boxes are going to be the sweet spot, at least for long grain rice. And quite frankly, maybe rice cakes are going to be the sweet spot for, uh, 
for regular rice. I don't know. Like I said, it's going to have to come down here and you're really going to have to analyze this and figure out which is really the best deal with respect to your rice. I mean, cereal was pretty good, but you will have to have a fair amount of honey in order to, to do that as well. So until next time, happy farming.